A crazy grandmother, a deceitful mom, there's some sweet home Alabama. Hello, Popcorn Recap here. Today, we'll talk about a 1987 movie called Flowers in the Attic. We already covered the 2014 remake, but figured we would cover the original and supposedly darker version of the movie. The movie begins in the home of Dolan Gangers, a happy family of six. Corrine and Christopher have four children. They are Chris, Katie, Carrie, and Corey. These kids love greeting their dad whenever he returns from business trips. One night, Christopher visits Katie's room while the rest of the children are sleeping. Since he notices she's feeling a little jealous of her mother, he gives her a jewelry box. It even has an MP3 player because he knows that Katie loves dancing to music. The happy life of this family didn't last though. On one fateful day, while Corrine and the children prepare to celebrate Christopher's birthday, police officers arrive instead of him. They inform Corrine that her husband got into an accident and is now six feet under the ground. Since Corrine is no independent woman, the family gets forced to sell everything they have to survive. Eventually, Corrine's only option is to return and be a leech to her wealthy parents. However, it seems they've already disowned and disinherited her. So Corrine and the kids take the train one night and journey to Foxworth's Hall, the grand manor of Corrine's family. En route, she promises her children that she'll win their grandpa's love back and reclaim her inheritance. She also promises to make all their dreams come true once that happens. Kathy doesn't seem to care about their wealth. She only wants to live in their old house together with their memories of their dad. When the family arrives at Foxworth's Hall, the butler apathetically welcomes them in. Corrine introduces her children to him, but he doesn't give a crap because he's got dishes to wash. When they enter the grand hall, Corrine finally comes face to face with her mother, Olivia. The atmosphere is intense as Olivia, strictly poised and prude, stares coldly at her daughter and grandchildren. She then leads them to a room on a third floor after ordering the butler to take their luggage. Once in the room, Olivia immediately assigns the children's beds by gender. Chris and Cory will share a bed while Kathy and Carrie do the same thing. She then tells them they aren't allowed to whine, cry, run, shout, and leave the room. An emotional Corrine tells her children to behave and obey their grandmother, especially if they don't want to taste her punishment. After that, Corrine and Olivia leave the children's bedroom. To prevent the kids from escaping, they lock the door from the outside. Chris assures his siblings that everything will be alright and that their grandmother isn't as mean as it seems. His positive outlook on life immediately gets tested after he opens the curtains and sees the windows are barred. The next day, Olivia brings food for the kids and reveals that Corrine got removed from their grandfather's will. It turns out that Corrine married her father's half-brother. Yes, that's right. Christopher is Corrine's uncle. That makes the children a product of some sweet home Alabama. Disgusted, Olivia doesn't hesitate to call her grandkids the Devil's Spawn. Since their grandfather doesn't know about their existence, the children can't leave the room as long as he's alive. Later that night, Olivia forces Corrine to show her lashes to her children. She received a total of 17 lashes, one for each year she lived in sin with Christopher. Olivia then says she can only give the children food and shelter, never kindness and love. After that, Chris treats his mother's wounds. Maureen says the time she spent with Christopher is worth a hundred weepings. Since their grandfather isn't aware they exist yet, Corrine still has a shot at getting her share of his fortune when he goes to the afterlife soon. Moments later, Corrine shows the kids a narrow stairway leading to the attic. She then tells them to turn it into the playroom for the twins. After that, she leaves them alone to settle into their new world. As days become weeks and weeks turn to months, the children struggle to deal with their confinement and boredom. Kathy passes time by dancing in front of the mirror while wearing her gowns. Chris reads books and daydreams about becoming a doctor. As for the twins, they spend most of the time making paper flowers as decorations for the attic. The only contact the twins have with the outside world is the barred window in their room. Meanwhile, Corrine continues her journey to win her father's love back. She even forgets to visit her children because she's focused on her goal. This forces her children to plan an escape route to get past Olivia 
and check if their mother is alright. Eventually, the twins start wondering if they'll even be able to touch grass again. Sensing they're starting to feel sad, Kathy and Chris read them a quote from the Bible to comfort them. So the children do their best to sacrifice and patiently wait for their mother to achieve their goals. While Chris washes Katie's back later in the bathtub, they start thinking that their grandmother might have locked their mother up. They believe that would explain why they haven't seen her for a while now. The next day, while Olivia brings the children's meals, she catches Kathy and Chris sleeping in the same bed. She goes off because she assumes they are doing the sweet home Alabama dance. As punishment, Olivia destroys Kathy's jewelry box, which causes her to have a mental breakdown. Later that night, Kathy and Chris escape from the attic's window to try and look for their mother. They go through the rooftop and use a rope to get down. Unfortunately, they get forced to climb back up after the dogs bark and the housekeeper turns on the roof lighting. The next day, Corinne visits the children wearing a beautiful dress. Although the twins are happy about seeing their mother, Kathy and Chris aren't. They confront her about failing to visit them for months. Kathy complains about the twins needing to touch grass to live a healthy life. Corinne rejects the idea and even says that their attempt to escape almost jeopardized her plans. She then gives the children a choice. They either leave and get nothing or wait just less than a month for their grandfather to croak so they can get their share of his fortune. Kathy walks away while Chris decides to side with Corinne. Sometime later, Corey gets a pet mouse while the attic's window gets barred again. Olivia also catches Chris chatting with Kathy while she's taking a bath. Olivia admonishes and calls them sinners. Angry, Chris chases the green-minded gremlin away. Later that night, the children panic after losing sight of Corey. Fortunately, they find him in a basket sleeping with his pet mouse. It seems he went to the attic to feed it earlier. When Kathy returns to the bedroom, Olivia corners her and locks Chris in the closet. After that, she goes into beast mode and cuts off Katie's long beautiful hair. When the closet doors eventually open, Chris finds her sister in the bathroom crying because of her new hairstyle. To help her out, Chris fixes Katie's messy hair. Katie finally confesses her anger toward Corinne for abandoning them in the attic. Weeks pass and her children start suffering from hunger due to Olivia's punishment. They start turning pale sickly and thin, especially Cory. It even reaches a point where Chris cuts himself to feed his blood to Cory so he can have something to eat. Eventually, Chris removes the hinges for the room's door so they can sneak out. During their forbidden trip, they see their mother's room. It's grand and filled with plenty of fancy jewelry. Seeing his sister about to explode, Chris calms her down, saying, Corinne must have an explanation for everything. They see their grandfather and Thinking he's dead, decide to approach him. To their surprise, he hugs them both but mistakes Kathy for Corinne. Kathy runs away screaming and returns to their bedroom. In their bedroom, Kathy asks her brother what he thinks about their mother's luxurious room. It all ends up in Chris defending their mother while Kathy curses her for her betrayal. In her desperation to leave, Kathy tells Chris they should escape and try to live on on their own. Chris doesn't like the idea for now because not only does he doubt his capability to support his siblings, he's still hopeful about their mother's plans. Several months pass once more, and it's now winter time. The children gather in the attic and the twins are clearly sick. Then Corinne arrives with good news. She says their family lawyer will include her in the will the next day. She also says that there will be a party that night dedicated to her. It will be her reintroduction to society. Despite the supposed good news, Kathy and Chris confront their mother for neglecting them. The children feel that the attic is now their prison and no amount of gifts will compensate for the time she has abandoned them. Chris tries reminding his mother about his unconditional love for her, while Kathy simply tries to fight for what she believes is right. Corinne starts thinking her children are disrespecting her. She walks out despite knowing the suffering her children endured for months. When Kathy and Chris sneak out that night, they see Corinne enjoying the party. She's with her new boy toy, their family lawyer. Feeling betrayed, Chris finally breaks down in the attic and Kathy comforts him. The next day, Olivia finds the children gathering around an ill Cory. She tells Corinne to bring the child to the hospital, and she does. The rest of the children can do nothing but wait for news on Cory's health. 
Later that day, Corrine coldly tells her children that Cory didn't make it because of pneumonia, despite the doctor's best efforts. Since they still need to keep their existence secret, Cory doesn't even get a funeral. They had him buried hastily near the manor. What's strange is that outside, the housekeeper doesn't dig just one grave, but four of them. Then, Chris discovers something sinister. He tells Katie that Cory and his pet mouse died because of arsenic poisoning. It turns out that the powdered sugar cookies they've been eating for months contain poison. They think Olivia is behind it and believe they're no longer safe in the mansion. So Chris sneaks out at night to gather jewelry they can sell for money when they escape. He then sees his mother and future stepdad and discovers their wedding is tomorrow. The next day, the truth reveals itself. It seems that it wasn't Olivia behind the poison cookies, but Corrine. When Olivia delivers the mail to the children, she gets surprised that it's empty. Chris then drops the smackdown on the old lady. He tries to beat her up, but Kathy stops him. Before the escape, Kathy wants to reveal the truth to her grandfather. It's her way of getting back to Corrine. Sadly, they discover he's no longer in the house because he passed away months ago. They learn that their mother will still get disinherited if she and Christopher have children. So it seems Corrine never intended her children to get out of the attic after all. With that, the children crash their mother's wedding. They tell the truth to try and expose her and, of course, Corrine does her best to deny everything. Eventually, Kathy tries shoving the poison cookie into her mother's foul mouth. Corrine dies after falling off the balcony and getting choked by her veil. After that, the children leave the mansion for good. The movie ends after an older Kathy talks about how they survive on their own. She's been dancing again and Chris is already a doctor. She also wonders if their grandmother is still alive. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.